Hello, good morning everyone. I am Dr. Varlakshmi working as Assistant Professor of Statistics in Vardhaman College of Engineering. In this video, I would like to discuss about Confidence Interval Estimate of the Parameters. Now let us see the problem on Confidence Interval Estimate of the Population Parameters. A random sample of size 81 was taken whose variance is 20.25 and the mean is 32. Then construct the 98% confidence interval. So in the last video we discussed about the differentiation between point estimation and interval estimation. So point estimation means if an estimate of the population parameter is given by a single value that is what we call it as a point estimation. If an estimate of a population parameter is given by two different values then we call it as an interval estimate of the parameter. So now let us see here the given values a random sample of size. So the sample size as in the last video we discussed about the sample size is denoted by n and the sample mean is denoted by x bar sample standard deviation is denoted by s. So now as per that the notation we have with the given values of given sample size n is equals to 81 whose variance is denoted by sigma square is 20.25 and the mean sample mean x bar is 32. So when the value of sigma square is 20.25 we are taking the standard deviation of this observation the value of sigma is equals to 4.5. So now the thing is so as based upon our interval estimation we have the fixed level of significances at 98% confidence limits we have some specified z values. So the now the 98% confidence level so the value of z is 2.83 so this is what we read it as z alpha by 2 this is also we observed in the last video. Now the thing is we are going to finding out the confidence interval for the given problem. So now we have only single mean so the formula for this single mean is x bar plus or minus z alpha by 2 into sigma by root n. So it means that we are going to finding out one positive value and going to finding out one negative value for the concern problem. So now the thing is we are going to substitute the values. So while substituting the values x bar value is 32 plus the value of z alpha by 2 is what 2.83 into sigma the value of sigma is 4.5 divided by root n so this is about with the value of 81 so here we finding out one positive value now the thing is we are going to finding out one negative value so that is what 32 minus 2.83 into 4.5 by root 81. So this is what an interval estimate of the population parameter is given by two different values. This is what the solution of the given problem. So binding out plus so we will get 30.835. So now by subtracting these observations we are getting 33.16. So this is the solution of a given problem of single mean. So whenever we are having a single mean for the given data in this way we are going to finding out a confidence interval estimate for the single mean. Now let us see the next problem. In a random sample of 100 packages shipped by air freight 13 had some damage. Construct the 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of damage package. So in the given problem we can identify the given sample of size that means the value of sample size small n is equals to 100. So as per our we discussed about our last estimation concept so an item is to be defective. We are going to define it as x the damage it is going to be damaged. So the item the event is already happened so this is what we are going to define it as x is equals to 13. So in the given problem had damage then construct the 95% confidence interval for the true proportion. It means that they are asking to finding out the proportion limits. So it means that we are going to finding out small p is equals to we know it as x by n. So this is equals to 13 by 100. So this is equals to 0 0.13. So when the value of p is 0 0.13 we obviously know the p plus q is equals to 1. So we have q is equals to 1 minus p that is 1 minus 0 0.13 the value of q is 0 0.87. So now as well as we are going to finding out the 95% confidence interval. The 95% confidence interval how to finding out for this corresponding z alpha by 2 the value is here 1.96. 
you are going to finding out the proportion of damaged package this is what we are they are asking to finding out the single proportion so what is the formula for single proportion of the 95% confidence limits so this is what p plus or minus we are going to finding out z alpha by 2 is concerned value is 1.96 into root p q by n this is what we call it as a standard error now as like as before problem we are going to finding out one positive value and one negative value so the value of p is equals to we have to substitute a positive first we have to add 0 0.13 plus 1.96 into root p q by n the value of p is 0 0.13 and the value of q is 0 0.87 by the value of n it will be 100 so we have to subtract again this value that is what 0 0.13 minus 1.96 into root pq by n this is what 0 0.13 into 0 0.87 by 100. So by finding out this simplifying this we will get the value of the interval is the first one is 0 0.63. 0 0.063 by subtracting the value from 0 0.13 we will get it as 0 0.197 so by this way we are going to finding out confidence interval estimation of a single proportion now let us see the next problem the average weight in a sample of 250 items produced from one process is found to be 120 ounce with a standard deviation of 120 ounce it means that they are giving it a set of sample size of one XMR value and standard deviation value. Another sample of 400 items from the other processes are 124 and 14. So again for the second sample set of observations also they gave you the mean value and standard deviation value. Then find the 99% confidence limits for the difference in the average weights of items produced by two processes respectively. It means that as in the last problem we find out the confidence limits for the single mean. Now the thing is we are going to finding out the confidence limits for two mean. Now let us see the given values we have to represent in terms of notation. So what given observations we have the first sample of size that is what n1 is equals to the first sample of size is n1 is equals to 250. It means that the value of x bar the average weight is in terms of x1 bar is 120 ounce. So sample mean is denoted by x bar and the standard deviation is denoted by sigma 1 is equals to 12 ounce. Let us consider the next sample size n2 is equals to how many items we have 400 items and we have with the sample average is 124 and the standard deviation of sigma 2 is 40. And they are asking to finding out a 99% confidence limits. When we have 99% confidence limits, we would like to finding out the value of Z alpha by 2 is 2.58. We are going to finding out the confidence intervals for the difference of the two means in the given problem. So now the thing is we are going to finding out based on the formula of 99% confidence interval for the difference of two means this is what we are going to finding out right so it means that for the difference of two means is x1 bar minus x2 bar plus or minus z alpha by 2 into sigma 1 square square root of this is under root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 so this is what we are going to finding out the confidence limits. So now the value of x1 bar we finding out one positive value and one negative value. So this is what 120, 120 minus 124 plus the value of z alpha by 2 for the first one is 2.58. The value of z alpha by 2 into sigma 1 square this is what we will get it as 12 square. 144 144 by n1 the value of n1 is 250 and the value of n2 sigma 2 square is 14 square by the value of n2 is 400 we finding out one positive value and the thing is we finding out one negative value so what is one negative value 120 minus 124 
minus 2.58 into sigma 1 square. The value of sigma 1 is 12 square by n1. So, the value of n1 is 250 and the value of sigma 2 square is 14 square by the value of n2 is 400. So, finding out one positive value and one negative value. By finding out, by simplifying this, we will get a positive value is 1.33. So, by simplifying this, we will get the negative value is 6.67. So, this is what the solution we are going to finding out the confidence interval of to me. Now, let us see the next problem. A random sample of 300 shoppers at supermarket includes 204 who regularly use sense of coupon. It means that they are giving the first sample of observations. It consists of the sample size and the event is already happened. It means the x value is given. In another sample of 500 shoppers at supermarket includes 75 who regularly use coupons. Then construct 98% confidence interval. Any one shopper at supermarket selected at random will regularly use sense of coupons. It means that they gave here clearly two sets of sample sizes and two observations that is which is already over. It means the event is already happened. When the event is already defective, we are going to define it as denoted by x1. So now let us see. First, we are going to write the given values. The given values in the problem is in a sample of size n1 is 300. The first sample of size n1 is 300. So, out of this first sample size 300, the event is already happened. So, it means that x1 is 204 regularly use sense of coupons. So, based on this, we are going to finding out in the given data, we are not having except these two, we don't have any other information. It means that we are going to finding out the proportion. So, what is proportion? P1 is equals to x1 by n1. What is x1 now here? 204 by the value of n1 is equals to 300. We are going to finding out the sample proportion. This is what P1 is equals to 0.68. When we know the value of P1, obviously we can find out the value of Q1. So Q1 is equals to what is Q1 value? 0 0.32. How we got this value? P1 plus P plus Q is equals to 1. The sum of all probability success plus failure is 1. So, 0.68. So, 1 minus 0 0.68. The value it will be of 0.32. So, now let us see in the same second sample of observation that is what N2 is equals to 500. When N2 is 500, the value of X2 who regularly use sense of coupons. This is what X2 is 75. So, we are going to finding out the value of second proportion P2 is equals to X2 by N2. So, this is the value of 75 by 500. So, based on this, we will get the value of P2. So, what is the value of P2? 0 0.15. So, when the value of P2 is 0 0.15, the value of Q2 is what? 1 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.85. 0.68 plus 0 0.2 is equals to 1. 0 0.15 plus 0 0.85 is equals to 1. So, now what they are giving? 98% confidence limits for what we are going to finding out for Z alpha by 2. What is 98% confidence limits Z alpha by 2 is what? 2.33. We are having two intervals of to having with two proportions. Now, what is the formula for this 98% confidence limits? Now, we are going to finding out the 98% confidence interval for these two proportions is we are going to finding out the value of P1 minus P2 plus or minus Z alpha by 2 is the value we are going to substitute as 2.33 and we are going to finding out P1 Q1 by N1. This is what we call it as the standard error of the particular value. P1 Q1 by N1 plus P2 Q2 by N2. So now we have to substitute the values and finding out one positive value and one negative value. The value of P1 is 0 0.68. 0 0.68 and the value of P2 is 0 0.15. 0 0.15 plus or minus and the value of z alpha by 2. What is z alpha by 2? We are having 2.33 
and the value of p1 q1 by n1 what is p1 here exactly 0.68 when p1 is 0.68 what is q1 value it will be 0.32 and the value of n1 is what 300 right plus the value of p2 q2 what is p2 q2 value the value of p2 is 0.15 and the value of q2 is 0.85 divided by p2 q2 by n2 what is the value of n2 here 500 so this is what we are going to finding out one positive value as well as with the one negative value so like this we are going to substitute that then we will get the constant confidence interval for the two proportions so this is what what 0.0458 by simplifying the positive value the next second interval we are going to finding out one negative value it means that we are going to subtract this negative value by simplifying this we will get 0.602 so by simplifying like this we will get the confidence interval in this interval we are going to conclude based on this the regular using sense of coupons thank you